All right, so we have another news video today. You guys liked the last one, so we're back at it again. This is from the Tech Hut newsletter on Tech Hut Media. I do recommend you subscribe. This newsletter came out on Wednesday, so this might not be news to you if you're a subscriber of the newsletter. There'll be a link down below. Now, starting off, Star Labs announces a 12.5 inch Linux Surface like device. Now, the last time we checked out something similar was this right here. This is the Fide Tab Duo, basically identical to a uh, Microsoft Surface like device. There have been some updates to it, uh, not enough where it's worth covering again, but this thing right here from Star Labs looks interesting. Having these kind of form factor type Linux devices are a little unique. Of course, we have the lower end Pine tab. We have the Jingpad, which is uh, deceased and dead. I do recommend you check out my video going over the whole kind of inside scoop process of the demise of that thing. Ultimately, we're really happy to see this. I'm going to go ahead to their website here. I did reach out to them to try to get a review unit. If they don't get back to me, I'll have to wait a little bit and then purchase it myself. But processor-wise, it does have an Alder Lake CPU, which is a lower-end Intel CPU. I do have a separate computer, a separate laptop that I'm going to be doing a review on soon. It has the same CPU, and for the most part, for being how uh, kind of low-end it is, it performs very well. 16 gigs of memory, 3.7 gigahertz, a 3, 3.7 gigahertz, it has a 3K display, apparently 12 hours of battery life, which those Intel processors, those lower end ones are pretty good on battery life. And of course it is an x86, that's a, pro, that's a big problem with some of the devices that come out, is these are ARM based devices and there hasn't been as much development for as long of a period of time as these uh, x86 devices, so it's a lot easier to get like Ubuntu or something like that working on these things. So here it is, it kind of has like an iPad-esque looking form factor. We have the little connector there for the keyboard, a bunch of stuff you'd expect as micro SD. Bluetooth, I don't see anything here about having a SIM card option, which would be super cool. Open source firmware with a bunch of different customization. The keyboard, which obviously I can't really speak on much of this until I actually have it in hand and I can tell you how it feels. Like I said, we will be working on that. Easy updates and open warranty, which this is cool. Our one year limited warranty allows you to take your computer apart, replace its parts, install and upgrade, and use any operating system and even your firmware all without voiding the warranty as it should be. Super cool stuff, again, looking forward to that. Moving on to the next segment of the newsletter, LibreOffice, probably the most popular free and open source alternative to the Microsoft Office suite of applications has an update. They have a nice little uh, interesting video to go along with that. We're at version 7.6. One of the main things is we have themes here, which is kind of a, uh, a feature that we've seen or we do see in uh, Microsoft Word. So you have various color schemes that you can apply to various like titles, heading one, heading two, kind of mixes up and kind of looks good together. There's gonna be a spotlight button to help you identify what the actual colors are you're adjusting and whatnot. So it's gonna be a cool feature. In addition to their theming, they've added support for zoom gestures when using touchpads, a new page number wizard to customize page numbers, so this right here is the actual change log. We have all the general stuff, writer, calc, impress, and draw. So a bunch of different things have been added here. This will be linked on the newsletter if you are interested in learning a little bit more. Next, KDE Plasma changes one of its controversial features. By default, KDE Plasma has it. So if you single click on an icon, it will open instead of a double click. It's called controversial here. I didn't know that that was a controversial thing. <laughs> Basically, apparently the uh, tipping point here was a uh, majority of the Plasma based distributions were changing the uh, default to double click to open and the KDE developers say that the decision was made for them. Now that was just one update. There have been some other things as well. There's now going to be a search field in all settings windows. And of course, there's even more if we head over to this week in KDE which is a wonderful resource. They have an RSS right here. I put that into like my um, RSS reader Docker container to get all this information. All this is gonna be coming to Plasma 6, which is right around the corner. System settings, auto start pages are giving you more options on some of the specifics of what happens. There's some better icon matching over here. Some general user interface improvements. Like everything, this will be, believe it or not, linked down below. The beta for GNOME 45 has been released and don't you fret, I'm gonna be checking that out very, very soon. I'm gonna skip down here to the beta release page. It was announced here on the forum. You could download it through here. You could see a bunch of unofficial stuff, but we're gonna check out the updated modules and changes. 
Now this right here looks like we're in a terminal window. I promise we are not. Here in the beta, we can see all the new versions of everything and some of the specific changes in various applications, such as Epiphany, which is their web browser. We could see some of the stuff going on here. Hide to sync buttons, updated translations. Let's go down to something a little more interesting. GNOME backgrounds, new defaults. Ooh -hoo -hoo. GNOME builder, GNOME Bluetooth, fixed a bunch of issues. Improved toolbar in the calculator. GNOME Control Center, new about panel displaying system information in a more compact way. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. I do recommend you subscribe because we are gonna be diving into this in much more detail. Map settings shell, ooh hoo hoo. Adding a camera indicator, adding a, ba a keyboard backlight quick toggle, improved light style variants, completing the GTK4 port, ooh hoo. Got some GNOME shell extensions, window list, modernizing default styling, window list, light style, new extension for light style. There is truly a bunch of stuff in this. I'm kind of, I'm getting excited for this release. Ooh, I don't like this though. Look at this under uh, GNOME software. Stop using the software repositories dialog provided by the distributions and always use GNOME uh, uh, software. Yeah, to ching trademark. In built dialogue, this will affect Ubuntu and Debian. Ho ho. And uh, apparently they are on a uh, the UI and feature freeze as of this release. So what we're getting in the beta is what we are going to get other than all the bugs and whatnot that they're probably gonna be working on and fixing. So from there, we have a couple cool Linux anniversaries, 30 years of Debian just turned 30. That's a little bit older than me. Uh, I think my parents were like seniors in high school 30 years ago. So there's a link to a uh, page going over that. And then the second one, Valve released Proton five years ago, super important for Linux gaming. And then last but not least in the GNU's for today, Mozilla launches a petition to stop a France browser law. This would require web browsers to block websites within the web browsers themselves instead of at the ISP level. This is very bad because then it would allow governments or it would set a precedent for governments to use tools such as Firefox or really any web browser as their own kind of censorship tools. Very bad. Absolutely big L for France and we'll end off on if you do want to sign this petition, it will be linked in the newsletter. With all that, we are going to wrap up. That is it. I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day. If there is any news or cool things that we did not touch on that happened in the last week or so, please let us know down below. And with all that, I do absolutely hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.